My research is mainly using computer models of the global climate system, the same models that are used to predict climate change over the next 100 years that you see very often in the media, but applying it to lots of different sort of case studies. So I look at how climate has changed in the past and what that has meant for environmental changes globally and what that has meant for the human beings that would have been living in those environments working all the way up to thinking about current climate change and potential future climate changes and how to improve things like food security for our growing population. I'm a volcanologist and I work on how volcanoes erupt and about their physics but I'm particularly interested in the effects volcanoes have on the environment and on people. When you get an eruption it can of course affect the people who live around the volcano but in very big eruptions, actually, it can have regional, even global effects. And uh, it's known that when you get a really big eruption, you can affect climate for maybe a few years after the eruption. So you get things like the failure of the Indian monsoon, which if it happened today, would have huge consequences for one of the most populous continents you know, in, in the world at the moment, for growing crops for them, for water supply, uh, all sorts of things. And I'm particularly interested in eruptions that have happened in the past. So there was a particularly large eruption called um, Toba, and Toba is in Indonesia, which had a major influence on global climate, on environmental conditions, and we think also on the humans that were in the kind of Indian Ocean sort of region around about that time. Another very large eruption happened in 1815 in Indonesia called Tambora and that produced such an enormous pollution around the world that there was a really strange climate in, for example, New England in the United States where in 1816 there was a, a year without the summer and, had, and there were frosts and snow during the, the summer and the crops failed. An eruption like Tambora in the modern world could have huge effects. And when you consider that the population now is reaching 7 billion and surely it's going to be 9 billion, the planet only has a certain amount of carrying capacity and we're reaching that point where even smaller climate variability has an impact on how well we can do that, on the prices of things like wheat. We need to plan for these events, we need to understand they're going to happen and then we need to put in place plans which are going to make the, the effects of these events uh, much less serious. What I'm particularly interested in is also thinking about how crops could mitigate against global climate change. And one of the ways in which you could do this is if you could have crops that have a higher reflectivity to sunlight, so they reflect more of the incoming solar radiation back out again. What I hope is that policymakers can take on board the idea that they need to be proactive about environmental change and natural hazards rather than reactive. The natural tendency of governments is to look not much beyond five years of the next election and of course uh, for the profound environmental changes that are happening you really have to look much longer than that in terms of policy and strategy.